What is up you guys? So today is week 15 day trading journey recap. Uh, a lot of things going on in this time in my life right now for me because I'm actually moving out and I'm trying to still day trade and change houses, maintain Wi-Fi, still keep my morning routine. And a lot of it's going down at the same time and it's very hard and hectic and it's just like stress everywhere. You know, nonetheless, I'm still day trading. I'm still trying to get this, uh, get the ball rolling on this. So uh, we'll get right to it. I had good sleep. Uh, I didn't trade on Monday because of a moving out issue. So like I had to, I had to leave early to do something else. So I made a few trades, but like not enough. I left at like 10 o'clock. I am down this week 5.8%. That should be a little bit lower because I made a mistake with my hotkeys, and I'll get into that in a second because it's a pretty uh, pretty uh, big lesson learned for hotkeys. So with that said, let us get into the recap. So here we are with week July 13th through the 17th, where I had a total of 5.8% down. Now going through the stats, let's go through the details. Uh, I'm down roughly 1469 bucks. So with that, let me go over my hotkey issue real quick. I actually hit the wrong hotkey and I bought way more shares than I needed to. And that put me down a lot compared to the average I've been losing. So on Tuesday, I had a hotkey. Well, I had a hotkey on my keyboard that was buy $1,000 worth, buy $2,500 worth, buy $5,000 worth, and buy $10,000 worth. I don't need all four of those hotkeys. I accidentally hit the $10,000 worth, didn't know I hit it, and I wasn't checking my PL, and I lost a ton compared to what I was normally losing. So <laughs> don't have a hotkey that you're not going to use because if you accidentally hit it, you'll pay the consequences. Lesson learned. Do not do that. I mean, thank God it's a simulator account, but point being, don't do that. So avoid the problem in general. Don't have that hotkey. But getting back into the stats, back to about 1,500 in losses, uh, average daily gain slash loss. I'm losing about 290 bucks on average this week. So every day I traded, I can guess I'm losing 290 bucks, which is not good. Not at all. Average winning trade, 57 bucks. So this week, I just wasn't hot on the, I wasn't on the game. I, don't, I couldn't figure out what was wrong. Um, average losing trade, 136 bucks. Uh, 15 total trades, but there's a lot more trades that happen in between those. That's just like on one name. At the end of the day, what's your PL on that name? So that's considered a trade. I've had a lot of like trades during those uh, in one stock where I've made money and lost money. So, but not, like, point being, I'm still losing money, which is not good. Largest gain, $69. Now, let's check that out and see what it was. Uh, I traded Boxel a ton. And as you can see, it, it just it went up a ton. But I'm trading it so... The way I'm trying to trade is like Ross Cameron, right? It's not it's not easy. It's quick in and out. You're, you're buying high and selling higher. Well, you can only buy high and sell higher so many times on one stock before you know the momentum slows down. And I, I'm like cautious of my issue. I think I know what it is. I'm not selling quick enough. And I, I'm like, I'm not selling my losses quick enough. So I, I'm holding on to them. I'm trying to get into that mentality. You know, you can always buy back in. And I just can't seem to get my head around it until I have like strict discipline. When I have discipline, I'm going to do this. So I'm trying to learn that and I'm slowly getting there. But let's go back to the stats. Largest loss. Now this is the trade that I had the mistake on. And I can't remember where exactly the mistake was, but it was in, somewhere in here amongst all these... Uh, Entry and exits. So now going back to more of the details. Uh, overview. I lost. My mistake was on Tuesday. Now you can see where I roughly lose. It's I don't lose more than like two fifty, two hundred dollars, which is about one percent of the margin capital that I'm counting, which is twenty five thousand. Now over the past uh, five days, it's just gone down, roughly the same slope because you know I'm, I'm losing the same amount every day, roughly. But my daily volume. Uh, you can tell later in the week that I, I started to catch myself in how many trades I make because I made a lot more trades on Tuesday and Wednesday, but I ended up losing roughly the same amount as trading less. So that's a good sign if you're trading less and you're, even though I'm not profiting, but you're losing the same amount if you trade less because you just got to pay more and more in commissions with every trade that you make. So uh, going into more detail, let's see what else we have. I keep forgetting, you know, what, what pages are available to me. But uh, why not look at the entirety of my TraderView account? So let's go ahead and filter that to all of my TraderView trades, but not all of them consist of me trading like Ross Cameron. So we'll start with, I think June 1st is when I started. 
but here we go. So largest gain, 728. Largest loss, 775. I believe those are in the same week too, which is pretty interesting. Um, total loss, 3,500 bucks. Now that is a lot of money because my margin would have really decreased with all that because I only have 5,000 of my actual money to use. That's way over half of it. So uh, my most profitable day is Monday and I'm averaging profits on Monday, which is very strange. I don't know if I'm just lucky on Mondays or the market is hot in the first day of the week, but that's, that's the case for me. And that continues to occur. Even though this week I didn't, uh, I left early from my desk, so I wasn't able to fully capture what would happen on this Monday. But going through later in the stats, it turns out that my longer duration trades are more profitable. So the quick ins and outs, like Ross Cameron, aren't doing too well. And that's to be expected because he's have he has so many years of experience that to replicate that in like the five, six weeks that I've been trying this method, not likely. So, but that's what we're here for. That's what the simulator is for, to practice this with fake money before switching to real money. Now, let's see what else of these I have. Performance by price. This is a very cool one. So I am profitable trading stocks between $10 and $20. Now, I didn't, I didn't think this was going to be true, but when I looked at this the first time, I was a little blown away like wow it's that's kind of interesting because I've been trying to find stocks between the two and ten dollar price range which is where they hit the majority of my purchases were or my trades were so when I trade roughly twenty thousand or more shares I'm profitable when I trade ten to twenty dollars I'm profitable and when I trade on Mondays I'm profitable so if I only trade Mondays ten to twenty dollar stock and twenty thousand or more shares I'll make some money but that's not the case. We got to be consistent. That's about that day trading is about consistency, and I'm not there yet. So overall, I overall in the past 30 days, here is my PL. It just it's really been decreasing. And this profitable week, I think was I think I started day trading like Ross on no. It was around here. Shortly after I started using TraderView, I was trading with the Ross Cameron techniques, and I have since been on a losing streak. But this is starting to bottom out. Like this is the bottom of a parabola, so kind of like a U, so a parabola is like a U-shaped uh, graph. So this is the almost the plateau or the flattening of the curve. So I think I'm approaching, you know, like my break even with this, his techniques. Like I'm I'm trying I'm getting better with his techniques, and I'm realizing more. Even though I'm not following strict guidelines yet, I'm trading whenever. Whatever I feel is a good setup, even though like I trade a lot of bad setups, I, it's hard not to trade. It's it's bad. It's a bad habit, and that's like you know this is not an easy task. And this is not an easy gig to do. So I'm I'm reaching that less and less of a loss uh, as we go. But I seem to have very profitable days when I do profit, usually more than one percent. Uh, but I do I have a lot more losses, which just aren't good. So enough of the stats, those are the details on the week and all the times I've been using TraderView, which is uh, five-ish, six-ish weeks. But getting back to, you know, just details on this week specifically, I think I need one more week day trading without strict guidelines and rules or like unmonitored before I know myself as a trader for the, for the Ross Cameron techniques. And the my data kind of shows that, like my PL is starting to plateau at zero, like I'm starting to break even, like I'm winning just as much as I'm losing. I feel like I'm approaching that threshold very soon. Um, I do need to come up with some rules for myself after looking at all my data. So that's going to be coming up probably in the next week or two. I'll try and write down some hard guidelines and follow them, even though mentally, like I'm trying to, like I'm trying not to trade in the morning or early hours because looking at my previous data, I haven't been profitable at that. Uh, another thing, I have to work on my composure. I'm still getting like this need to just trade, like trade to trade. I really did that bad my first week of trading, but now I need to monitor that like a lot more I'm, I'm getting better at it this is so emotional you guys it's, it's going to take you a while to adapt it is nothing like i've done before it's it's educated gambling in a way because it's not you don't know where it's going to go like in the end you really don't you can just make a really good educated guess based on prehistoric data or like so it's, it's a good hypothesis so with me moving out as well i've had like zero time to, to like work out and like read and just stay like fresh mentally and physically i haven't been as prepared as I have been in the past. So starting next week, I should be officially moved into my new place 
and I'll be taking videos there and I will have a lot more time to like both get in shape physically because I do feel like just bloated and like kind of gross feeling when I'm sitting trading. Like it just, it messes with you more than you think, like your physical health. I, it really does. And I'm also going to start reading another book. It has nothing to do with trading, but it's like the mentality of like success. And it's very like how to, how to reach into your full potential. I'll actually grab the book for right now and or I'll grab the book right now and show you what it is. So this is the book I'm trying to read. It's called Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. I think that's how you pronounce it. But the funny thing was I bought this book months ago while I bought my day trading book. And then I just now heard Nate from Investors Underground mention this book. Like it's a must read. And I'm like, wow, what are the odds that I picked this book out just off Amazon because it looked good. And, and now he's mentioning that as a day trader. And I'm like, it couldn't have been a better fit. But now I'll have time to read it once I'm officially moved in. And you, you better believe I'm going to go cover to cover on this because it seems like it's a very intriguing read. So with that, that should help me like, you know, kind of get my, my bearings straight and my mentality like on success because I'm, I'm trying to work towards it. It's not easy. It's, it's hard. So I've also been considering on dabbling in the short game again, like I did a while ago. So I've had like a lot of confirmation from people in the chats that, you know, like shorting is a good way to go, though it is more in involved and complicated. So I'm going to try experimenting with that. I don't know how soon I will, but I hopefully can get, you know, a few short techniques and trades in here pretty soon and start start playing around with the idea of getting back into shorting because I haven't been doing it. And when I did do it, it worked out at first and then I just started to lose it and I wasn't, I wasn't successful uh, as much as I was doing long trades. So I'm still working on that and how I'm going to like involve that and incorporate that into my day trading uh, style and whatnot. So in week 15, I have still like yet to, to come up with a, like a good morning routine. Like what time should I wake up? What should I be doing first? You know, what time should I be, you know, focused in on, on only trading and putting my phone away and, and like, when do I stretch? Cause I, I stretch to help me uh, be more relaxed in my chair and just a bunch of other things. I'm still trying to come up with like that, that right sweet spot, you know, morning routine and everybody's going to be different. So it's, it's, I'm almost there. I've been trying different things and I've had success in some ways and then I'll change it and no more success, but like I'm trying to adapt. And when I officially move out, I think I'll have it uh, down pat to like waking up at this hour, studying these, uh, these watch lists, going over these kind of stocks and whatnot. So when I get that figured out, I'll be on the right track to potentially start gaining or making uh, profitable trades. So that will just about do it for the week 15 recap. Biggest thing is make sure your hotkeys are, are, only have necessary hotkeys. Don't have too many where you can accidentally hit it and really screw yourself. Physical health really is taking a toll on me right now because I've been moving out and a lot of stress has been like on my shoulders. So I haven't had a clear mindset for trading. I could I could see it in my trading. Like I'm really losing my composure. And it's all been the best the past like two weeks. So two to three weeks has really been bad. So with all that, I will see you guys next week. You guys have a good one and stay tuned because the journey, you know, and I say this every week, but the journey is still going. It is a long process and it is not easy. So guys, be smart when you try this. And, you know, hope, hopefully you're doing better than I am at this point. Week 15, you know, nearing that plateau of uh, breaking even, but we're getting somewhere. So like I said earlier, you know, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. I'm Dylan Da Silva. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you liked it. Give this video a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to stay up to date on all new content every week. You guys have a good one.